And of course, we could do the same for our sign up view. But before then, I just want to go somewhere and do something really cool. Let us insert Bootstrap into this and see how it will work, all right? Um, so that we can have a more beautiful view for Bootstrap. Remember, you can always go and check out Foundation on Foundation website. So I've uh, opened it here so you can see this is the URL for Foundation. If you want to learn more about designing front end using Foundation, this is the website, their official website. And of course, you can hit the tutorial section and study it. All right, if you already know Bootstrap, then you have to go to bootstrap.com slash get started, or you just visit bootstrap.com and hit on getting started. And um, we're going to copy this Bootstrap CDN and insert it into our website. So we will insert it into our layouts file. If we go back to SRC, we will see that there is, um, we have to, Go back to back into our SRC. We will hit on template and then we hit on layouts. Inside layout, we'll see something called default.ctp. The .ctp here stands for cake template. All right, it's the equivalent of what you would have in Laravel for .blade.php. All right, so it's the cake php template file so this is the default the root template file it's inside this file that every other the, every other part of your cake php website is um contained let me show you that um how this thing is structured of course it starts with php is a php file and um this is the html as you can see and um, this is the head of the html where every other thing is imported, the icons, the CSS files, and everything. And the next thing you will see is the body. Inside this body, there is a navigation bar. If we go to our, our cake website that we're building, this is the navigation bar. The navigation bar is in all website, in all the pages of our website. So it's in the root templates. So the next thing we will see outside this navigation is that cake is trying to render something called flash which means every time you have an error or, or a notification that's supposed to show it's supposed to show in all pages notifications sh is showing all pages example this one so cake php put it in the main view files since it shows in all pages one more thing that shows in all pages is this menu but then it changes according to which page you are in so cake php didn't put it by default outside here but we will eventually uh, put it outside here or we put it in its own file and call it in each page all right the next thing you will now see is the main content of this file so cake php is fetching the content of the file so if we have login.ctp you will see that the code for login for ct.ctp is very minimal because up here cake php is important this the rest of this template from this place up and down it's important this down so the login this basically fetches the contents of login.ctp and fills it in here and the next thing you have to see is that cake php uses these short php tags the cake php template so be mindful of when you're using it it doesn't mean that the full php tag will not work if you had the full PHP tag like this, I believe it would work just perfectly. All right, now we have a general overview of what is happening. Let's just do a quick edit of the top of what we have here. So we have a documentation here. If we decide to change it to Dave Partner, and, um, and I get right back and refresh, Let me pan a little. As you can see, it has changed to Dave Partner. That's how easy it is to add, modify things in Cake PHP. So you can let your imagination fly and uh, change the colors and make things really beautiful. But what we want to really do right now is to import Bootstrap. These are the default Cake PHP CSS sites, CSS files that style this front page that we're seeing here. So what we'll do just to prove it. 
is to delete this file then we hit save as you can see it is saved if i come back right here i'll refresh and what we see is a page that doesn't have any style at all all right and remember if you're more if you want to use bootstrap then you have to delete these guys so i want to use bootstrap and made it instead of just um deleting the foundation code and basic cake, p cake php css style i'll just add my bootstrap cd in here remember we copied this bootstrap this from the bootstrap website when we went to get bootstrap.com we were at getbootstrap.com and we copied this so this basically inserts bootstrap into our application and uh, if we get back remember that i inserted it above this foundation and not below so if we get back and um, refresh what we have is a site that basically work, looks the same very much the same but something has changed we can now use bootstrap codes here so which means we can go to any website that has sample bootstrap codes and uh, for instance um, i went to bootswatch.com if you hit enter it will show you um sample bootstrap templates so it has very free bootstrap templates so these are different teams you can choose any particular team i chose um anyone that looks nice is okay so let's just go with something that looks like um, yeti now you hit enter and um, it opens yeti and then we're looking for forms we hit on forms we're trying to create a very nice sign up form so this looks very cool all we do is hit here and copy this guy so um when we are at the bottom of the page we just take this code to our cake php application and there we are so i'll right click and copy and then we get back to our code first of all we hit up the sign up page as you can see the sign up page looks as exactly like the login page because of course we cloned something if you look at this top you'll see the navigation which we basically have here let me go to the sign up page where we are at sign up and this navigation that's what we're seeing at the top here and then this container contains a form this container is that container by the right it contains a form and what we will do is to paste basically we're going to replace this guy with the code we just copied but before then i want to paste it underneath so i've pasted it the code we copied from bootstrap the sample form if you scroll up you will see it then what we'll do is that kickpitch we has a unique way of opening forms so what we have here is this form creates user this automatically tells kickpitch to take the name of this website go to users controller and find the controller that's where this form will submit so i'll copy this and use it to replace this form opening tag and there we have it and then i'll copy the form ending and use it to replace the form closing tag and there we have it the last thing we want to do is to make sure that we have a submit button so we go up and copy the submit button and use it to replace this last submit button but i will just paste it right underneath so you will see something this guy has a class so how do we add this class as you can see this submit already um, tells cake php that this is a submit button but uh, we still need to add this class to style it properly so let us just look at what this default button looks like so if we come back to our page and um, refresh we should see at least all right there we are this is the form above and this is the one we copied from bootstrap from here is the one we copied from bootstrap it looks cool as you can see there are two buttons this is the one that cake php just inserted but we want our button to look like this what we have in bootstrap so let us see how to edit or add that, those extra classes 
So if we get back to the bootstrap button, we will put a comma, put block bracelets or block brackets, and then we call what we want to be class. We just call it this class, and then we will put a fat arrow, and then we open another comma, and we paste the contents of the class inside it. So there we have it. If we get back there, we should see two identical submit buttons. Let me just rename this to submit log sign up. Let me just rename it to sign up. So this, so that we can know the difference, if we get back to our page and uh, when the refresh is complete, we should see a sign up and uh, a submit. As you can see, they are now identical which means we can get back here and now safely delete this. We also don't want a cancel button. Or who wants a cancel button? We will simply delete the cancel button. And there we are with our sign up form. Another thing you can notice is that KickPHP has a way of creating form elements. As you can see, this creates a form control and calls it email but when we come to our code actually we have this input and we have um, we have this form control class we have ID of input email we have the placeholder all of them can be done in the exact same way we did this one by just adding a comma and adding extra classes moreover you can just leave your form elements this way it will still work perfectly so wait, it is now safe for us to delete this guy. We're deleting this form because we have recreated it below and we have saved. And um, our menu should not just be list user, it should be login. And we want it to go to action login function when somebody clicks it. So if we refresh, this form should disappear when the refresh is complete. As you can see, we have a login here that we just created and we have a sign up form. So we can change this legend to sign up. If we get back to our code, we see legend here. We can call it sign up. And of course, is there any other thing we can change? Yeah, we can actually change the form controls to look um, something else. So we can change text box to about and um, remove this checkbox we don't need it for anything so we can change text area to about me and uh, of course we can look for something else maybe categories to list here and uh, we can click submit so basically it's that simple when you have um things to do like this you just quickly highlight them and delete can delete just to keep our form minimal um, one more thing we're changing text area to text area to about and remember the names of your forms your input like some of them don't have names I will edit it after this video so that this video doesn't take too long but then I'll show you in the next video uh, we have to make sure that the names of the input fields like these ones don't have name the names must tally with the, the the column name on the database so if we have input okay we can have name and um, it must be the same name as the column name on the database so i'll do this after this video and show you in the next video thank you very much